And I think that the really big problem for Mike Pence is that he's just, he represents a kind of old Republican Party. Welcome to The Debrief, where we talk with the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the headlines they're covering this week and where the story's going next. I'm Sarah Bedford, and I'm here today with Editor-in-Chief Hugo Gurdon. And Hugo, Vice President Mike Pence has entered the 2024 primary field this week. How can he possibly both run on his service in the Trump administration while also running against Donald Trump? Is that even possible? It's possible. It's very difficult. It's a, it's a good question. How is he going to do that? He, he is clearly uh, being asked that question right now and was right off the bat. Uh, he wants to claim credit for the things that the Trump administration did that people like and that he would be proud of. He wants to distance himself from uh, Trump's demeanor, his behavior, his you know, general crudeness and brutality, uh, and from more specific things such as the, the January the 6th uh, riot at the Capitol. But I don't think that that's, I mean, that's a difficult thing to do. I don't think that's his biggest problem. I think that the really big problem for Mike Pence is that he's just, he represents a kind of old Republican Party. There's something, he arrived on the stump with tired old phrases about the arsenal of democracy. He just can't make himself interesting. He's, you know, he just hasn't got any fire in there. He can talk, he can use the right words that the Republicans have used all of these years. Uh, uh, but, you know, he has this sort of buttery, smooth radio ad delivery. He wants to be a sort of a kind of an aw shucks regular guy. His, but all his phrases are canned. And, you know, frankly, the, what Mike Pence will, is likely to do, because he has the name, name recognition, is he'll siphon off a few votes and make it just much more likely, that much more likely, that Donald Trump will be able to win with a plurality. plurality of the votes uh, rather than a majority. So I don't see Mike Pence actually changing the race except for the worse. Another long shot candidate entered this past week as well, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. He's been you know, out of office for years. He did a 180 on Trump. What, what does his constituency look like? I don't know that he has a constituency. I and mean, certainly he's, uh, you know, as a, as a prosecutor and an extremely sort of uh, able uh, attack uh, rhetorical guy, he's able to do some uh, damage to other candidates. He obviously did so to Marco Rubio in the last, in, in 2016. And he came out in this uh, election with the clear intention of doing damage to uh, President Trump, who mocked and uh, belittled Christie uh, back in 2016 and 2017. Uh, I think that uh, Christie wants to return the favor, and, and frankly, you know, if he were to do some damage to uh, President Trump, uh, it would be a public service, and uh, it would help the Republican Party if, as I believe, the party would be best off not choosing Trump. So there's that in his agenda. He says he's out to win it. I don't think he's got any more chance than Mike Pence of winning it. Ron DeSantis has now been in the race for a right. few weeks, an right. official candidate. Do you see him improving at all in any of the areas that folks were worried about, mostly his ability to do retail politicking? Yeah, well, he doesn't come naturally to that. Um, he has uh, done, uh, uh, sorry, DeSantis has mended some of the damage he did with the speech about Ukraine, which went down extremely poorly. Um, the thing is that DeSantis is very smart He's uh, pugnacious, he's popular, and he's been an effective uh, governor in a, in a big state. He can't just rely on his record, he, and he, he has to be more natural. I think that a number of his colleagues up on, uh, up on Capitol Hill from the past have said that, you know, really public speaking is, is not his strength, and, and we've seen that already. He's going to have to improve. But I think that, you know, the rough and tumble of what is going to be nine to ten months before the primary is decided and the nominee is decided, he's bound to improve over the course of that time. And, uh, you know, he is the one serious contender right now, apart from Donald Trump. Well, Hugo, thank you so much for being here today. You can get more writing from Hugo and the rest of the political team at WashingtonExaminer.com.